Oh, boo-hoo, someone has an opinion that's different from mine. <gasps> oh, I don't care if it's mean. Everybody's got different opinions. That's no excuse to report someone like a goddamn asswipe. Hello guys, my name is Cyrus the Great. By the way, some people are wondering why my channel is named Cyrus the Great. Well, it was either Cyrus the Great or Super Cyrus. I made my choice and I stand by it. Today I'll be talking about more Season 4 episodes. After watching Queen Banana, I just had to rewatch all of the episodes. From Stormy Weather to Heroes Day Part 2. And I also had to watch a bunch of South Park episodes starring Butters. Now that that's done, I feel so much better now. Am I going to review every single existing Season 4 episode in this one video? Yes! You heard me. I said yes. I really am going to talk about all of the latest Season 4 episodes. Only the ones with English dub. I'm sorry guys, but I just refuse to listen to the original French dub. I have nothing against the French language, I'm just saying I prefer the English dub over the French dub of Miraculous. And also for this video, I'll be having a very special guest to help me talk about these episodes. And she's going to come right in just a bit. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. Now before I start, I'd like to clear one thing up. Some people or maybe a lot of people were very annoyed at the overuse of heavy metal songs in my previous video. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I think I got a little carried away with the music references there. I'm sorry guys. I promise I will never get carried away with heavy metal music ever again. <laughs> Felix is back, baby! I'm so goddamn happy to see him again. Ever since I watched his first episode, I was dying to see him again. He's just so incredibly interesting for Miraculous Ladybug standards. Also, Natalie's back! Yay! I thought she died. No, really, I really thought she died because she looked like she was about to die. Well, I guess she's not dead. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, let's get to the plot. The episode starts with Gabby talking to himself, and then to Emily, who is supposedly dead or maybe in a very severe coma. I don't fucking know, but I actually fucking care. If we get more episodes focusing on this woman, that would be so heavenly. In fact, I would actually recommend this show to everyone if the whole premise is focused around the aggressed family. But no, instead it's about a piece of shit. Gabby arranges a soy... Ray, I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry. He invited Amelie and Felix to the party so he can finally get his ring back. You wanna know why Mary is in this episode? Yeah, me too. Even though she doesn't really need to be in this episode, she's... here. Mary's friends made a plan for Mary to... Confess her love to Adrian. If anyone can come up with the perfect plan for you to finally tell Adrian you love him, it's them. <sighs> to think that the writers aren't even considering the true fact that this is getting old. Spoiler alert, in the end, she failed to confess her love to Adrikins. You really thought I was going to fall for that crap? Of course I knew she was going to fail. If you're planning on shoving this thing up my ass for the 272nd time, then you better do something new! I'm just so goddamn tired of the same stupid ass thing! And I bet the writers are tired of this too. I love Alia now, but the one thing that I truly hate about her since the beginning is the fact that she supports Mary's obsessiveness of Adrian. Like, dude, you're her best friend. At least try to think that maybe, just maybe, what she's doing is really unhealthy for her age. <laughs> A liar. You gotta stop obsessing over her, Marinette. If anyone can come up with the perfect plan for you to finally tell Adrian you love him, I'll fuck you. While they are talking about their evil plan, Chloe and Velma appears and says that they recorded the whole meeting. They plan on showing that to Gabriel, so Adrian can stay away from these cocksuckers and especially that stalker. Chloe's actually doing the right thing. Adrian deserves to stay at home, man, because he most definitely doesn't deserve to be with her. Just go back to her, you had way more chemistry with my darling. Mary's friends came up with the idea of giving her a disguise so she can be at the party to stop Chloe. What a very convenient way to have a major role in this episode. They did all of this not because Mary is finally going to confess, but because they desperately need her to be a part of this episode's plot. Pa fucking pathetic. Oh, oh no! <laughs> As Amelie and Felix arrived at the party, Felix returned Gabriel's ring. However, it was a fake ring. 
I don't know, dude, it looks real to me. That triggered Gabby, and is he going to akumatize himself? No, because if he does that, Felix will know that he is Shadow Moth. He made a Gabby Senta monster and plans on akumatizing that thing, so he can be the Gabriel who makes negative emotions, and the Shadow Moth who akumatizes him at the same time. Brilliant idea, I must say. Meanwhile, Chloe plans on showing Gabriel the video. Felix leaves to talk to his mother. That just leaves Adrian and Kagami alone in the same room. Will they have a meaningful conversation? Will they have a defining character moment? No! They did absolutely nothing with this full of potential concept. Have Adrian and Kagami talk about their breakup, since their relationship is actually very interesting to explore. But we can't have good things in Miraculous. We can't have character moments. We can only have, they are meant to be. Anyway, Mary tries to stop Chloe, but honestly, who fucking cares about this? Felix goes to Gabby's office, and he looks at his auntie. Um, what the hell? Is that lust in his eyes? What are you looking for, Felix? Maybe he's just looking for a place to jerk off. For some reason, he knows who he is. How do you plan to make me do that? By using your powers, Shadow Moth. That's why I love Felix. And now you know that I only need to snap my fingers to make you disappear from here. You wouldn't dare. Okay, it's time to clear things up. I was being sarcastic at this part, okay? Felix is not a Senta monster. Or maybe he is, I don't know for sure. But in my own interpretation, he's not. I think Felix acted like that because he doesn't know what Shadow Moth can do exactly. Felix gets akumatized, but he was able to reject it. He's an absolute badass. Use your anger to akumatize the center monster. Dude, don't tell me what you're going to do. Just do it and I will know what you're doing by just watching you do it. Telling the audience what the hell is happening kind of ruins the whole suspense and excitement. Show, don't tell. Gabby akumatizes his center monster self and it transforms into the Collector 2.0. It's basically the more technical version of the Collector. The original only had a notebook. This one has an iPad and it does the same job. The only difference is it looks cooler, I guess. I just wanted to show you this video to hurt the baker girl and keep Adrikens all to myself because I'm a mean person! <gasps> Why did I say that? What? Wait, 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 wait. Replay. Keep Adrikens all to myself because I'm a mean person! <gasps> Why did I say that? Yeah, why did you say that? I thought you lost all of your respect for him. I thought he's not your Adrikins anymore. And also, why do you still care about him anyway? You're wrong, Chloe. I am Adrian. Oh, I'm so sorry, Adrikins! <laughs> I thought you guys are not friends anymore. So, either Chloe forgot to take her normal pills, or this episode never happened. Kagami saves Adrian and tries to fight the Collector. Wow. During a serious situation, she didn't even try to act irrationally like, Why did you break up with me, Adrian? That is what you call a smart character. Not like this fucking cunt. After defeating the Collector, Ladybug gives him a lucky charm. Big mistake, buddy. Now just tell me something. What the hell is this? Huh? What is this? What is this crap? What, what is this? <laughs> oh god. Uh, let's move on. I haven't read anything about it in this bell book. What if... The book was only a chronicle of what has been discovered up until now. Whoa, 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 Gabriel, slow down. Slow down. Just let me breathe. Okay. So that's why he did that. So he can distinctly remember that there's a scratch in Gabriel's pants. Since this Gabriel doesn't have any scratches in his pants, he is now suspecting that maybe he is Shadow Moth. Absolute genius! I think Felix is the only one here who took normal pills. In the end, Mary and her friends... Uh, yeah, whatever, I don't care. And the episode is done. Overall, I think it's okay. Felix is obviously the best part. Whenever he's on screen, the episode gets exciting. The whole subplot of Mary trying to stop Chloe felt so pointless that I honestly wouldn't feel anything if she never appeared in this episode. I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. It's a missed opportunity. And I'm not just talking about this episode, but the show in general. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm the artistic Alabelle, or Alabelle for short, or Allo for super super short. Bet you weren't expecting me, huh? Wanna hear something funny? I've never actually watched an episode of Miraculous Ladybug before. Now, I know there are three responses to what I just said. You've never watched MLB? How dare you critique it when you know nothing? And the second, You've never watched MLB? Consider yourself lucky. 
And the third response is, you've never seen MLB? Meh, whatever. Regardless of your response, let me explain. Because of the massive dumps of spoilers, fanfiction, and memes on Instagram, I know basically everything about the show. The major details, anyway. And I'm also someone who thinks the fanfiction is awesome since it actually explores the interesting aspects of this show as opposed to the show itself, which fails to take advantage of the interesting ideas it has. Case in point, does anyone else think that this episode was a letdown? This episode was hyped up as being something super cool and groundbreaking. This was the writer's chance to finally answer some much-needed questions about Gabriel Agrest. His name is in the freaking title. We could have had an entire flashback episode that goes into his relationship with Emily and what horrible event happened between them. This is season four, for Pete's sake. Why are the writers hoarding this information? At this point, they'll end up leaving all the juicy details up until the very end of the show, which is terrible pacing. And what exactly do we get in this episode? We get Marinette further proving why Adrianette is a problematic ship since she still remains as uncomfortable around him as possible. You know what I mean. Yes, there's slight improvements, but things could definitely be better. We also get Marinette lacking a significant amount of self-awareness since she can't see how obvious her actions are when it comes to her crush on Adrian, which only adds to the problem that no one in the show calls Marinette out on her behaviors because if they did, she'd be aware of them. We get Mari once again breaking and entering into a place she wasn't invited. We get some shenanigans between Gabriel and Felix. I mean, it's neat that Felix knows Shadow Moth's identity and all, but I think it would have been better in an episode that wasn't this one. Literally any episode that wasn't titled Gabriel Agrest would have been fine. We also get the best thing to come out of this episode, to me, which was actually Chloe's contribution. But Allo, Chloe was being a selfish jerk trying to get Adrian taken out of school. She should have enough self-awareness to not do something like this. Season 2 Chloe would never. Her character development has been ruined. Re yes, yes, I know. But hear me out. I think that Chloe's actions are evidence that she will get a redemption arc. What? You might be asking yourself. Let me explain. If Chloe's motivation for getting Adrian kicked out of school is her means of getting him all to herself again in order to reconcile with him, then that means she feels sorry about how things turned out between them. Her intentions are for things to work out between her and Adrian, but her actions are quite bad. She's going about it this way because her pride won't allow her to apologize or talk to him like a mature person would. The fact that she wants things to be better between them again suggests that she will continue to make efforts, either positive or negative ones, in order to make up with Adrian. The ball is in the writer's court now. I was told to give up on Chloe's redemption arc since it was botched with Miracle Queen and every action of hers after that. But it seems weird that we're still getting sympathetic moments with her, right? If Astra claims that she is unredeemable, why have her make the effort? If his plan is just to have her stay bad and disown Adrian yet again, then that's redundant and he shouldn't bother. I'm going to give him and the other writers the benefit of the doubt and say that they are intending on turning things around for her. We can only hope. And now some miscellaneous Chloe thoughts related to this episode. How did Chloe and Sabrina find out about the meeting? How did they specifically know that the meeting was about Adrianette? Does Chloe regularly spy on these people? I'm gonna be honest here. The act of hiding in the ceiling to listen to others' conversation and record it sounds much more like something Marinette would do, doesn't it? Like, really think about it. When Mari is at her worst creepy tendencies, she totally would. Huh. I went on a longer tangent than I intended to. I didn't intend for this to turn into a Chloe rant. Sorry about that. But you know, if the episode won't focus solely on Gabriel, then neither will I. As much as I like the Chloe implications, this really should have been a flashback episode. Call me foolish for having expectations when they weren't promised, but tell me you didn't also think this would be a flashback episode. So many things should have happened earlier in this show. Why is the pacing so bad? In any case, that's all I have to say about Gabriel Agrest. Back to you, Cyrus. Once upon a time, Milan and Ivan, objectively the best couple in the entire series if you think otherwise, shame on you, plans on protesting against Andre's Project Oxygen. It's supposed to be a gigantic air freshener. 
That's really all it is. This project will destroy a lot of trees. How ironic since this is all about cleaning oxygen. And the only way to build it is to kill the source of oxygen. That's why hashtag best couple are protesting against it. The protesters are increasing and demand Audrey to stop this really stupid thing. Andre calls Gabriel for help, but Gabriel said no and tells him that he should do this on his own. Since Andre is a goddamn pussy, he gets akumatized, and he transforms into Maledictator again. This time he has a Senta monster called Megaleech. That looks really cool, and it also has a unique power. It can divide anyone who it eats. Cat Noir tries fighting all of them but gets outnumbered. As soon as Ladybug shows up to help Cat Noir, she already summons her lucky charm, so people can see her cool costume very soon, yeah! She recruits Milen for the battle, and Milen transforms into Polymouse. That's right, we get another superheroine, but this is one of those rare occasions where I actually felt something for the character. Polymouse is one of the very few superhero characters that has a good buildup. Before she becomes a superheroine, she cries and admits that this whole problematic situation is all her fault. Ladybug gives her the Mouse Miraculous, but Milen refuses because she believes that she isn't worthy enough to be a superheroine. That made sense because Milen is a coward, and her cowardice has been pointed out so many times. Ladybug then tells her that she has to overcome those fears, and her badges are like Miraculouses. She also tells her that she is already a superheroine and that she just needs the final badge, which is the Mouse Miraculous. Milan finally accepts the Mouse Miraculous and transforms into Polly Mouse. Overall, her buildup is pretty good because it made rational sense and the execution is top notch. I must say, she looks nice. Polymouse uses her multitude power to fight the tiny maledictators. Ladybug then recruits more guys to help out. She got Kagami, Nino, forgot his name, and. Hey! My man! <laughs> this my man! <laughs> there you! <laughs> yeah, that's my man! <laughs> so now we have a new superhero team, still called Team Miraculous. If you guys are very happy and thrilled to see them all together, then I am so jealous because... Because I just can't. Whenever I look at this, I don't feel happy, I don't feel sad, I don't feel thrilled, I don't feel anything because these guys... These guys don't know each other, and I don't know them! You wanna know why I made this video? It's because I just wanted to point out how fucking stupidly lazy this is! Let me try to explain. Guardians of the Galaxy is a team that I really like. Why? Because I know who these guys are. The film gave them time to grow, develop, and connect to each other, and to the audience as actual characters. I felt really happy and excited when I finally see them team up for the first time because I know these people. And these people know each other. They bonded, they got to know each other, they went through a lot together. Thanks to all of that development, I have become attached to them emotionally. These maggots! They might as well be called Team Robots, because that's what they are. They are just mindless robots that are programmed to do whatever she says. And they have absolutely no contradictions with her plans and no problems with their superpower usage. You guys have no idea how empty I feel when I see them work together. I love Kagami and I loved her as Ryuko, but... But am I glad that she's back as Ryuko? No, simply because Kagami coming back as Ryuko doesn't make any sense. Why is she back as a superheroine? Even this guy. Why is he back as a superhero? Even this guy. You said. You said. But Hawk Moth knows who you are now, and keeping one's true identity secret is a very important rule among superheroes. Are you fucking with me? And also, I know this is going to sound very harsh, but, but I just need to say this. I don't think these guys needed to be here in the first place. Even her. Yeah, I know what I said, I love Milena's Polymouse, but I honestly don't think she needs to be here as well. Why? Well, if you guys remember the stupid-ass episode, Nutbuster, then you know what I'm talking about. Oh my god. OH MY GOD! She can handle more than 10 Miraculouses at once. Ever since I saw this dumbass episode, I will never look at her the same way ever again. You can use more than 10 powers. Right? So why do you need her for this mission? Why do you need them for this mission? You can always just use the Mouse Miraculous and multiply into 10 or more and tell your clones to use other Miraculouses. You can do that, right? Yes, as a matter of fact. So why did you, did you bring them? Because you're lonely? <sighs> Let's move on. After Megaleech got defeated, we get to a scene with a laughably embarrassing animation error. While Ladybug is talking with the mayor, her costume keeps on changing. Again. And again. How the fuck did they manage to forget about this? 
Did they do this on purpose? This has to be on purpose because this is just pathetic! Or maybe they just ran out of time. Which is understandable. The episode ends with this. Adrian, oh. you took a stand against me today. Why do we need this? Is this supposed to build up to something? I hope it is, because it's been three seasons and we still haven't got any information about his backstory and family story. When are we going to know shit about Adrian? In the 100th episode? Oh shit. Anyways, that's it for Mega Leech. Overall, I think it's pretty good. It's basically a Captain Planet episode. With a bunch of stupid shit thrown in. Seriously, what were they thinking with this part? Fan service? Well, if you're going to do fan service, at least try to make rational sense. Godzilla vs. Kong did that way better. I'm going to give this episode a 7 out of 10. Could have been better. We can chalk this episode up as another example of why Mari's excuse of initially not giving Chloe her miraculous back because Hawk slash Shadow Moth already knows her identity is absolutely total garbage. This will continue to be proven throughout the season. Being fully aware of Optigami and Centibubbler, Gabriel is not evil enough or competent enough to utilize the knowledge of these teenagers' identities in their full potential. Dude gives up super easily when it comes to taking advantage of this info. He fails it at like, twice, and decides not to go for it again. Hey Gabriel, this isn't Avengers Infinity War, where there are only 1 in 14 million possibilities in which you win. All you need is a solid plan and some persistence, and you knowing these superheroes' identities will get you what you want. But this is Miraculous Ladybug. We can't have a competent villain or else the show will end too quickly. Duh. Silly me. Anyway, does it bother anyone else that the Mouse Miraculous gives its user two powers? Ladybug is the only one who's supposed to have two powers, right? Creation and... fixing everything? How come the Mouse Miraculous gets both Shrink and Multiply? I don't know what the actual names of them are. I don't watch the show. I just know what they do. If I were in charge of things, I'd take away the time travel power of the Bunny Miraculous, because it's overpowered and kind of redundant with the Snake Miraculous. Anyway, and I'd give it Multiply instead. Get it? Because rabbits multiply. The Mouse Miraculous can keep just the shrinking, but that's just my opinion. One day, Rose became sick and goes to the nurse. It was later revealed that she has always been sick since she was little. It's been kept as a secret for some reason, and the reason why is because, from what I understand, Rose doesn't want her friends to look at her as their burden. Which makes sense. I myself don't want that as well. Later, Julika got akumatized for feeling guilty about telling everyone the truth about Rose. Julika transformed into Reflecta for the... I lost count. She now has a sense of monster named Guilt Trip. It absorbs people who are feeling guilty. Julika is guilty, so she gets in first. No! Wait! What? You were not expecting that? What were you expecting, you fucking cunt? Later, everyone got sucked into Guilt Trip, including Ladybug and Cat Noir. Well, not really everyone. The ones who don't care are Chloe, Velma, and- <gasps> My waifu, where have you been? <laughs> Ladybug and Cat Noir were about to lose for the first time, but thanks to Rose, with the power of love, when the power of love, she was able to save them. Ladybug then gives Rose the Pig Miraculous. Pig Miraculous. Okay. And Rose transforms into Sailor Moon. Here comes an unpopular opinion. I don't think this is a good match. This is good, and this one, and this one, and this one, but this... It's hard to explain, but I'll try. Whenever I look at Rose, I always thought her spirit animal is a unicorn. Because to me, she has always been about unicorns. Unicorns this, unicorns that. So why couldn't they just give her a unicorn miraculous? Because there is no unicorn miraculous. Oh man. Oh, you love unicorns? Well, get ready to watch all your plans sink right under your feet. Watch all your plans sink right under your feet. I'm just saying that if there is ever a Unicorn Miraculous, it would be so perfect for Rose. But instead, she gets the Pig Miraculous. Don't get me wrong, I love pigs. I think they're cute. Well, maybe that's the whole point. Her costume design looks incredible. And I think it's the most unique. Mostly every single superhero in this show wears spandex. But Sailor Moon wears a spandex and a skirt. The only exceptional thing about you, my dear, is your skirt. That skirt is the biggest reason why I love her design. But I don't like her name, though. Pigella? 
would have been so much better if it's Sailor Moon. So anyways, they managed to find Reflecta, who has been consumed by her own guilt. Sailor Moon uses her superpower called Gift. It's supposed to summon what the targeted person wants the most right now. So it's like Lucky Charm, except it's not used as a weapon. The gift is a normal day in class, with nobody treating Rose as a VIP. This saves Julika from her own guilt and gets purified by Ladybug, as well as the rest of them. After that, they all stop believing that Rose is a VIP. The episode ends with one of the most confusing exchange of dialogues ever. Hey, how come you never laugh when I say something mean? Because you actually mean it. <laughs> True. <laughs> Saying mean things can only be funny if you don't mean it. Okay, knock knock, who's there? It's the police ma'am, you better come quick, your daughter has been gang raped! <laughs> no, 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 you cannot joke about that! Why not? I know I said something mean, but I didn't mean it, so it's funny! Right, Adrian? Overall, Guilt Trip is awesome. It is, in my humble opinion, not only the best of season 4 so far, but also one of the best episodes in the entire series. I would honestly rank it as my top 4 miraculous episode. It's that good. A lot of people are actually very annoyed with Rose's high-pitched voice. To be honest, that never really bothered me. Her high-pitched voice for me fits perfectly with her design and her character. And also, so many people don't like this episode and the real reason why is because of her voice. That's it. It's just because of her voice. And people say I'm the one who complains about the smallest things. I'm going to give Guilt Trip a 9 out of 10. Hot garbage. I will readily admit that the entire class freaking out over Rose lightly sneezing was quite funny. The joke works because almost everyone is involved and they're all being so extra. So you get a point with me miraculous. As far as my critiques go, this one's a bit subjective, but I dislike Pigella's design. She has a fully functional superhero costume, which gets ruined by a tutu being tacked on. Granted, I'm not really a fan of that rubbery pink thing near the top, but I can deal with it if the tutu weren't there. I understand why the tutu is there, but it doesn't look right to me. Her hair also bothers me. I can't tell if it's the bangs, the pigtails, or both, but it just looks awkward to me. I'll show you guys Pigella's concept designs that I think would have worked a lot better. Now, regarding Guilt Trip, the most notable thing is Nino's guilt and how he feels like he's a failure of a friend for not helping Adrian stand up to his father. And then Adrian finds out about this guilt. You know, that's a very interesting character development for both of them. Are we going to see anything come from this revelation that will strengthen their friendship and or aid Adrian in standing up to his dad? No? We're never going to touch up on this again, are we? Oh. And in three episodes, Nino will accidentally insult Adrian by insulting Cat Noir to his face? Hmm. Fantastic. This guy. Oh, I forgot his name. Shit, let me just research. Luca is sad because Mary hasn't been visiting for a while. Mary's friends plan on getting them back together. And that doesn't make rational sense because in Gang of Secrets, they promised Mary that they will let her be after her breakup. Alia convinces, or should I say forces Mary to visit Luca after avoiding him for so long. Mary keeps on saying no, but since she is being forced, she has no choice but to ask Julika to not let her brother join the party. Now, I know Mary did a really stupid thing, but at least she apologized and learned her lesson in the end. I just wish her stupid ass friends would do the same thing. Julika couldn't tell Luca to not go to the party because why would she say that? Jagged Rolling Stone comes in and that triggered Luca and Julika's MILF. I mean, of course she would get angry. He left her to raise two kids all by herself. And the real reason why he left her is because he wasn't cool enough to raise a kid. And he had the gall to trespass. Honestly, Fuck this guy. It's time for the party. Julika has a crisis for not being able to speak with her mind and heart. Gabby senses negative emotions and targets... Luca. But not Julika, who is literally crying right now. Go to Julika, man! She doesn't hate you, she's just Marinette. Hey, did you hear something? No. Hmm. Did I? I don't know. The gang managed to cheer up Luca, which causes Gabby to pause. Then go to Julika! Oh wait, it's too late. Mary already made her happy. You should have gone to Julika first, you cunt! Again? Wha 
What's going on? What's going on? What's going on is that you forgot to take your normal pills. The gang is surprised by the fact that their friend is literally the son of a famous singer. And Gabriel targets them. So people can get akumatized by just being surprised? But Gabriel failed. He targets Julika again and failed again. Ugh, if you're going to fail one more time, Gabriel, I'm going home. I'm going home. So they're the ones who got akumatized. And they both transform into Crocodile, named after their band. Honestly, that's a really clever name. As far as I know, this is the very first time where two akumatized people don't work together as a team, but rather act like enemies to each other. Interesting concept. Is that what you wanted to happen, Gabriel? Ladybug gets Julika for the battle. She gives her the Tiger Miraculous, and Julika transforms into Purple Tigress. Outstanding design, mediocre name. She's basically the female inferior version of Cat Noir. Her Kwame is part of the same family, and her superpower is literally Cataclysm, a weaker version of Cataclysm. By the end, Julika received a very special reward. Character development. <gasps> Oh yeah! She was able to finally speak with her mind and heart. Jules is awesome! The episode ends with Luca and Mary being friends again. Overall, I like this episode. The writing felt a little bit forced, it kinda didn't make sense, but I can honestly give those a pass, because Julika's awesomeness made me forget about the bad things. Crocodile, in my opinion, is Julika's best episode. It made her really interesting, likable, sympathetic, and just downright amazing because she had character development, something that is very rare to see in this show. So far, this is the second best episode of season 4, and I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It sucks. If Marinette is partially concerned that she might hurt Luca to the point of him getting akumatized again, why not just give him a magical charm right off the bat? In fact, why not just give everyone a charm? Does she have to specifically wait until after they've been akumatized to give them one? If so, that's weird. But even so, since many people have been akumatized, give it to everyone who has so we don't have to run to the same issues again. If there is a time limit to when she can give the charms from when they get de-akumatized, then that's dumb. She can create anything, so why limit herself like that? Also, the Kufain siblings have been twins this entire time? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of twins and birthdays, isn't it kind of messed up for Mari to not want Luca to attend his own birthday party? Unless she didn't know they were twins. Like the rest of the fandom didn't. Except for the three of you who guessed it. I understand why, but... Hmm. There's that lack of self-awareness with Marinette again, and no one correcting her. To her credit, she eventually figures it out, so that's cool. On a positive note, Purple Tigress has the most aesthetically pleasing superhero outfit to me. I 1000% approve. She's also the French Captain Falcon, apparently. Neat. Let us now talk about Optigami, an episode that moves the plot forward. In a good way? Let's see, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Natalie and Gabriel, only now, and I mean only now, looked back at the events of Miracle Queen and remembered the secret identities of the superheroes Chloe exposed. Yes, I remember. Oh, you remember? Huh? Fuck you! Fuck you! Natalie made a Santa monster called Optigami. It's basically a spy Santa monster. And she made that thing since... when? Since then. Since then? Since... since then? Since when? Since then. Since then? Since when? Since then? Since then. Since then? Be specific, woman! You mean right after the events of Miracle Queen? Am I right? Before or after Gabriel fixed the Peacock Miraculous? <laughs> Shut up! It was actually before the fixation. Okay, but I thought Natalie needed to rest so badly because because she looked like she was about to die. So so tell me why Tell me why Tell me why you couldn't let her do her job after you fixed the damn thing? Because you want to show off your dumbass costume? I have another question. Tell me why Tell me why Tell me why only now only now you decided to come up with the obviously smart idea of spying on your enemies. But not back then! Because you guys didn't know how to make a spy Santa monster before? Because you guys were fucking morons? Now if some of you are going to say, Why do you always complain about the smallest things, Cyrus? Here's my one and only response. 
Fuck you! This is not a really small thing. This is possibly, maybe, perhaps, the biggest plot hole in the entire series. You do realize that if they could have just done this thing in the first place, they would win by now. So, why couldn't they do this before? Another question, why only now you decided to remember the events of Miracle Queen, but not before Season 4 started? These guys are morons! Morons! Mr. Pigeon 72 is an episode that takes place before Optigami. Rina was in that episode, and they didn't even bother to take advantage of that? They didn't even try to remember Miracle Queen before this episode? Idiots! Uh, let's move on because I'm about to break. I'm about to break! Mary and Alia got invited to an award party that features Adrian. Alia thinks that she should wear the Fox Miraculous full time because now that she knows that her best friend is a superhero and she's a superhero too, she came up with the idea of being more involved in assisting her as Rina. Okay, I think I understand a bit. Only a bit. But Mary, who is full of shit, says that she can't because it would be too risky. Because why? Because it's too risky? Well, why don't you- why don't you just tell her that she can't go with her Miraculous because- because Shitty Moth knows who she is! That is if you can actually remember the events of Miracle Queen. Do you remember Miracle Queen? Or is there a good reason why you couldn't tell her? Because you don't want her to leave your side due to your loneliness? Then fucking go and tell Cat Noir that you're Ladybug. Shitty Moth doesn't know who he is. Oh wait, no, she can't do that because- because of cunt blank. I still can't see how that's a good excuse. We'll talk about that later. So anyway, Gabby makes a Sinta monster of Alec, so he can piss off Audrey. He akumatizes Audrey and she transforms into Style Queen for the third time, I think. <gasps> Go, Adrian, run! Kagami, no! Since you want to play the hero, you'll be the first to get fired! Ugh, ever since I saw Mr. Pigeon 72, this made me cry a river for my darling. I'll never look at her the same way ever again. She deserves so much better. It's funny how my favorite characters are always the wasted ones. Well, Julika is not wasted. Chloe Bourgeois, holder of the Miraculous of the Bee. Okay, this part confused me. Chloe is the holder of the Bee Miraculous? No, she's not, dude. Not anymore. There's a brand new holder of the Bee Miraculous. What's even more confusing is this. Where the hell did this woman come from? Mary and Adrian both tried to transform, but ended up being stuck on an elevator together. Surprisingly, Mary didn't stammer. Not even once. Impressive. Ladybug will show up. Yes, and Cat Noir! <laughs> That'd be so funny with a couple ton of people here to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Rita gives her the Bee Miraculous and she unifies into Lady Bee. She looks kinda creepy. She also recruits Michelangelo, against Mary's will. Ladybug is shocked that her best friend did something behind her back, but she accepted this anyway. Little did she know that he's actually a Senta monster. Or should I say, an imposter- I'm sorry, I'm sorry, uh, I, I'm really sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Her lucky charm is a mirror, and let me tell you, this lucky charm is really clever. After Style Queen got defeated, Mary's lucky charm actually has a purpose now. She was able to figure out that Nino is a fake, since he failed to do the secret handshake. Now that is clever. Cat Noir cataclysms the Turtle Miraculous and that gives Natalie a headache. Why exactly? I thought the Peacock Miraculous is completely fixed. Oh wait, she made this thing before this got fixed. Am I right? Alia realized that she fucked up so bad and that she almost ruined everything for everyone. And yet, even after doing something so stupid, Mary lets her keep the Fox Miraculous and is willing to tell her everything she knows. And she is also willing to let Alia replace her if something happens to her one day. I'm sorry, but what? She almost jeopardized your secret identity. And yet, you didn't punish her, but give her the opposite? An awesome reward? Tell me why! Hey! Let me ask you again, Mary. Do you remember Miracle Queen? So that was Optigami. It's okay, I guess. The battle with Style Queen was excellent. But other than that, the entire episode confused me a lot. The beginning made the biggest plot contrivance ever. You can now create a Senda monster that can spy on your enemies. But not back then. 
If you could have just done that in the first place, boom, the end, the villains won. Oh wait, they couldn't do it because this was broken. It takes too much power, so it was too risky. Then why didn't he fix it in the first place? Why did he fix this only now? What caused the really long delay? Oh my god. Oh my god! The ending is just... Why? Tell me why! Tell me why! Tell me why you would let her keep the Fox Miraculous, even though Gabriel knows who she is, and even though she fucked up so bad! Take some normal pills, Mary. For an episode that moves the plot forward, this did a terrible job in my opinion, simply because it didn't have logic. For an episode that entertains the viewers, this did a fantastic job. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. It's okay. It was a good plan by the villains that only didn't work out because the writing said so. Okay, so... How much creative freedom does Natalie or Gabriel have when making Scent Monsters? Because if it is complete freedom, then I see no reason as to why they can't make a Scent Monster the size of a fly, or something even smaller, like nano size. Make it a speedy flyer and have said fly follow around Ladybug and Cat Noir until it discovers something. And even if they didn't do that, logically, Optigami as is should have been able to discover some important info. It was discreet and effective and made no sense how it wasn't able to find anything after being super discreet and tailing a group of teenagers. I call shenanigans. There would be less shenanigans had Mari or Adrian or whoever discovered Optigami somehow and because they were aware of it, were able to let the others know to be aware of it too, which would contribute to them being even sneakier than usual, making it so that Optigami was ineffective. But as it stands, none of the heroes knew about it, so it doesn't make sense how it would fail. The only hole in the plan is that Gabriel suspiciously invited only the miraculous holders to that event with Audrey, plus Marinette, who he didn't know was a holder. How did no one find it weird that it was only those people who were invited? How did no one question Gabriel's guest list? Adrian didn't ask his dad why only these kids get to go? What makes them so special? And you're telling me none of them figured out it was all of the miraculous holders that were present? And from someone else's perspective, why would Gabriel only invite these specific kids? If he were smart, he would have invited all of Adrian's class and think of some excuse to get Kagami and Luca to show up. And hopefully, during this planning, he would have made the brilliant deduction that most of the holders are in Adrian's class. In all honesty, this plan of tailing miraculous holders and trapping them would have worked perfectly as a finale if executed correctly, since the plan itself is actually pretty solid. I think if you mixed elements of this episode plus some of the elements from Ephemeral, you'd have an awesome episode and end of villain arc with Shadow Moth. But Miraculous fans aren't allowed to have nice things, so the plot drags on and on, and so does the pointless drama. In any case, another missed opportunity. I do have some positives though. While I feel Alia shouldn't have saved the day so that we can finally get a reveal that isn't taken back, I do appreciate her contributions and quick thinking in this episode. She has a slight miscalculation, but it's cool to see how reliable and capable she is. I also really like Lady B's design. I think it's the most aesthetically pleasing of the unifications. On to the next one. The episode starts with a nightmare scene. It is a nightmare about Mary realizing that she is a hypocrite. You must keep your identity a secret, blah blah blah, otherwise I can't give you your miraculous. I would have made a much better ladybug. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, it's a moment of truth! Ladies and gentlemen, it's a moment of truth! I've been waiting for this my whole life, and you wanna know why? Because I hate Mary for being a hypocrite so goddamn much, and it makes me angry even more that no one seems to acknowledge that. You wanna know why I'm okay with my waifu being a liar? Because her behavior has been pointed out as bad a lot of times. Not to mention, she faces consequences. It makes her realistic and I like that. But Mary's hypocrisy? Fuck you! Fuck you! I believe that Mary realizing that she's a hypocrite is the only way for me to like her again. And I do like her again. Not only is Chloe in this nightmare, but Cat Blanc is also here. Again, I still don't see how that's a good excuse. This nightmare scene is honestly kinda creepy. That is until they raise their arms. Mary wakes up and immediately goes to Alia's house. Alia assures Mary that she's going to be just fine, and she's actually prepared all the time. I just made a rhyme. While they are talking, the phone keeps on ringing. Alia picks it up and it turns out to be Gabriel. 
Now that's how you do a twist. The stupidest villain is back as a Santa monster. And he traps Mary, Nino, and the rest of her family. Gabby makes a deal with Alia. Denounce Ladybug. Mary is horrified, but Tiki reassures her that Alia will figure something out because she's amazing. And she also tells her that Alia has never let her down. And that is simply... Not true. She tries to message Alia, but Santa Bubbler actually has a brain. Now she has no one to talk to, except Gabriel and Santa Bubbler. I think this is the very first time where I can honestly say Gabriel is doing a pretty damn good job. Since Mary cannot help, it is all up to Alia. She was able to trick Santa Bulber into thinking that she is just going to potty. Alia bumps into the table, transforms into Rena Rouge while no one's looking, makes an illusion of herself going to the bathroom to distract Santa Bubbler, and then sneaks into another room to call Cat Noir. I must say, I'm really impressed. Alia is so awesome! Rina then contacts Cat Noir about the plan to defeat Gabriel. When Cat Noir wants to know about what he should do, Rina tells her to just stay put and wait for instructions, since this is a two-person plan. But Cat Noir does not like that. And the reason why is because, from what I understand, he gets jealous when someone else is helping Ladybug. Really? A two-person plan? There's only one two-person plan, and that's Ladybug and me! Look, I'm fine with Cat Noir acting like this, because this can actually showcase that he has flaws. But I did not like what he did, because it makes him look bad. What if you actually killed someone? Do you give a fuck? So Rina makes the illusion of Ladybug telling Alia what she should have told her since the beginning of season 4. Alia, you need to give up being Rina Rouge because I just took my normal pills and completely remembered the god-awful season 3 finale. The illusion then says that she will find another person to be the Fox Miraculous holder. This manipulates Gabriel. Cat Noir... Here we go. Cat Noir chases after Santa Bubbler, and he tries to fight it so he cannot look stupid for not participating in the mission. But he failed embarrassingly. Rina then makes an illusion of Mary being in the bubble. This gives her the opportunity to transform without anyone looking. Her lucky charm is a pot, which gives her the idea that the coffee cup Gabby is holding is the one that controls the Santa Bubbler. She pulls out the horse miraculous and unifies into... into... Pega... Pega... Bug. <laughs> Stupid name, stupid design. Nothing more to say, let's move on. Mary teleports to grab Gabriel's coffee cup so she can put an end to Santa Bubbler. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the stupidest plot contrivance in history. You had the perfect chance to grab his miraculous and put an end to everything. I am for real. I you could have used your right hand. You were holding nothing on your right hand. Your right hand was free to hold anything. And yet you didn't use it to grab his miraculous. Instead, you just wanted to show off how cool you look. Fuck you! Fuck you! And now you might be saying, well, maybe she couldn't grab it because it was too far away. She has no fucking excuse. She can teleport anywhere she wants, right? Yes, she can, as a matter of fact. So why didn't she just teleport to another angle? So she can perfectly grab Gabriel's Miraculous. Thanks to Mary's stupidity, Gabby runs away. Oh wait, you still have a good chance. You can teleport anywhere you want. So teleport to him, grab his Miraculous, and end all of this. Oh no, he's completely out of sight. Bitch, you're 15 minutes late! Bitch, you're 15 minutes late! Gabriel runs away, but not before freeing Alia's family and Nino to kill them. Kill them. But Ladybug was able to catch them all. This could have been the end of Shadow Moth. <laughs> no shit, buddy. No fucking shit. No fucking shit. Alia is then told that she can keep the Fox Miraculous, but needs to be more secretive than ever. Gabby cries like Miss Jackson's daughter and the episode ends. Do I like Mary now? Well, first of all, I'm so glad that she finally realized that she's a hypocrite. And I'm also happy that she actually tried to do something about it. It makes her realistic, so yeah, I like her now. But she did something so fucking stupid that she ended up losing all of my respect once again. So fuck you! Fuck you. I guess it really is my destiny, my prophecy, to despise this woman with all of my heart until the very end of time.
I'm serious, you could have easily defeated Shitty Moth if you bothered to use your right hand to grab his miraculous or maybe teleport to a better angle. And don't you dare use her age as an excuse. She's just a 14 year old girl. Yeah, she is. She's just a 14 year old girl. A 14 year old girl that can handle more than 10 miraculouses at once! I know she admitted that this could have been the end of Shitty Moth, but, but that doesn't make me want to respect her again. In fact, it made me say only three words. No. Fucking. Shit. Cat Noir's behavior in this episode is just crap. In my opinion, the way he acted really needs to get pointed out by the characters, so I can actually sympathize with him. But nope, he acted like an asshole without any acknowledgement and that sucks. They just made Cat Noir completely unlikable. But not as unlikable as this woman. Gabriel, despite the fact that he got defeated, I actually really love the amount of effort he put in his battle strategy. Alia is awesome. For me, there is one thing that season 4 has successfully accomplished. Making me love Alia. She truly has improved a lot. I despised her back then. I thought she was an annoying piece of shit. But season 4 performed a miracle. Alia makes me look weak. <laughs> Overall, the beginning of the episode was great, but as it goes on, it got worse. And it managed to make a gigantic plot hole. It's as gigantic as the plot hole of Optigami. You had the perfect chance! 5 out of 10, good enough. I personally don't really care about Marinette giving Alia the Fox Miraculous permanently. I think it's ultimately a fine decision, depending on how the story will progress. I think characterizing Marinette with heavy anxiety over entrusting someone with a permanent miraculous was good to see. I definitely relate to being so worried about something that it shows up as a nightmare and eats at you, even in your waking life. So I have no problems with that. Alia might be Mari's best friend and Mari may trust her, but it's not always so simple to get rid of what's a pretty reasonable fear. However, I do heavily question not informing Cat Noir about Alia keeping her miraculous. The lack of trust towards him is astounding. I know she's still pretty traumatized from Cat Blanc, but it still seems messed up. And as much props I give Alia for her quick thinking in this episode, it was also messed up how she treated Cat Noir. Why even call him if you have no intention of telling him or including him in the plan? I'm sure the reason was so that the writers could come up with some reason for why Cat Noir should start becoming jealous and frustrated towards Ladybug. Anyway, as opposed to the last episode, this episode has the worst design unification in the show, Pegabug. It just looks really awkward, as, it, as if two designers were fighting over which design was best and just settled for both ideas at the same time without attempting to create any harmony between them. And that's all I have to say about this episode. Now let's get to the sequel of the Mary Cat episode. Mary Cat is the best ship in the love square because whenever Adrian is Cat Noir, he becomes his true self. Whenever Mary is Mary, she becomes her true self. And whenever these two hang out as their true selves, I actually want them to be endgame. This is what I truly want for the main ship. Healthy, realistic, and interesting. Too bad that can only happen to Mary Cat, a ship that only happened in four episodes. Anyways, let's get to the episode. We start off with Ladybug and Cat Noir fighting Glaciator. For some reason, Ladybug and Cat Noir are voted as couple of the year. And that pisses Ladybug off. Ladybug throws Cat Noir in the trash. And honestly, I think that's a well-deserved consequence. He has always been romantically harassing, I think I just made something up, romantically harassing Ladybug for a long time. And she just really wants him to stop. So, he finally stops. Character development. This right here is one of the biggest reasons why I love Adrian. I just love watching characters suffer. That's just my own opinion. It's never fun without a little drama. Gabby targets his own son, but he doesn't want to. I mean, he still continues to let his Akuma fly away and evil eyes the target. But he then orders King Kong to drive him home as if he doesn't want him to get Akumatized. I guess... I guess he just wants to save that for later, in case of someone else who isn't Adrian feels sad or angry. Who knows? Mary tries to find him a gift because she has already planned this shit. You know, if you really want me to believe that they are meant to be, then give them some chemistry. Obsessiveness isn't the key to decent fictional romance. So she goes outside to give him a gift. As usual, she messed it up. Ah, I messed everything up again! <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no shit, buddy. Adrian talks to his dad for a while, and then leaves. Okay, that was awkward. What happened to your Akuma that you released a while ago? Kagami tells Mary that she is stupid, and she needs to stop being stupid. I'm not exaggerating, that's the whole point of the scene. And you know what? I agree with my darling. So Cat Noir is out to destroy every single Lady Noir billboard. Because he really wants to get over her. Why couldn't you just talk to your dad instead of destroying things that aren't your property? Do you have any idea how much these things cost? Cataclysm! Uh... You're gonna have to pay for that, dude. Meanwhile, Mary practices her love confession. She spots Cat Noir and decides to practice with him. This scene is honestly perfect. It has perfect comedic timing. And it's just downright adorable. I swear I'm not lying when I say I actually laughed. Not by guilty pleasure, but by pure comedy. I gotta say, when Cat Noir admitted that he has gone way too far with his love for Ladybug, I felt so much empathy for him, because that made him realistic. We seriously need more characters acting like this. If they do something terrible, then they should face consequences and or admit what they have done. Not in a forceful way, but in a natural way. This, my friends, is how to humanize a fictional character. I am loving this episode so far. The ice cream man gets akumatized all because he doesn't ship Mara Cat. Are you fucking kidding me? After defeating Glaciator for only a couple of minutes, Cat Noir goes back to Mary. As Mary finally used her heart to practice her confession, I started to think that her love for Adrian really is true love. Because her dialogue was so good. I think this would be an actual good TV show if she's going to act like this more often. More often than this! The next day, Adrian goes back to being obsessed with Ladybug. Dude, I thought you f <sighs> I thought you actually had development when you finally moved on from Ladybug. Why'd you have to do that? Tell me why! Tell me why! So that was Glaciator. It has really damn good Mary Cat moments, but has a very disappointing ending in my opinion. I was really hoping for Adrian to just stay on the path of moving on from Ladybug. That way I can actually consider him as a miraculous Ladybug character that gets development. But no, he didn't move on and probably never will. Because God forbid miraculous characters getting real development. I'm giving it a 6 out of 10. Could have been the best and I mean it. Next. Let us now get to Haksan, aka the episode where Alia replaced Mary, aka the worst Cat Noir episode ever. Once upon a time, the Bread Cheng family goes to London. Who will watch over Paris since the one and only Ladybug is gone? Alia, her BFF. Gabriel makes a Santa monster named Haksan. It's basically a virus transpiring USB. He used it so he can akumatize robot. I totally forgot about that thing. Alia's senses are tingling, so she transforms into Scarabella. She looks amazing! When Scarabella met Cat Noir for the first time, he tried to destroy her. Okay, I understand why he would do that. She could have been an imposter. But but could Adrian at least let her explain for a second? He could have seriously hurt Alia. You know what's going on? Yep, Ladybug sent to stand in and didn't see fit to tell me about it. I'm sure she didn't have time. As usual, no need to keep the cat in the loop. <gasps> Remember the worst TV special ever? She was being so unreasonable and it made Cat Noir accidentally kill this robot woman. Why was she so mad at Cat Noir? Because Cat Noir never told her that he's leaving Paris. Yeah, I really thought she was being unreasonable here. She could have easily used the Horse Miraculous to teleport back to Paris if there are any danger. Plus, she can always talk to Cat Noir later, not during a serious fight. Plus plus, what in God's name was Cat Noir even supposed to do on his own? Bottom line, I was defending Adrian and shitting on Mary's shit in this movie because I felt like that needed to be done. Adrian's actions were justifiable, while Lady Bitch's actions were not. The same exact thing is happening in Haksan, except it's reversed now. Ladybug's actions are justifiable, but Cat Noir's actions are most definitely not justifiable. The way Adrian acted in this episode is just so unacceptable! Ladybug said to stand in and didn't see fit to tell me about it. I'm sure she didn't have time. As usual, no need to keep the cat in the loop. You have zero right to say that angrily, you fucking cunt. You were the one who never told Ladybug about your trip to the US. And yet you have the balls to act like you've never done something against Ladybug's will? 
truly hypocritical. If you thought that was bad, well, honey, it's just the start of it. Wait till you see the end of this episode. After defeating the robot thingy, Ladybug apologized to Cat Noir and says that she'll never abandon him. Okay, it's nice to know that she said sorry for not telling Cat Noir about why she didn't appear, but... But what about him? Are you going to apologize for what you have done? Do you even remember what you did, cunt? You almost destroyed Scarabella. You acted like a complete hypocrite. You acted like an unreasonable moron. You expect me to forgive you? You expect me to give you empathy? You expect me to think you're the victim here? FUCK YOU! FUCK YOU! I'm fine with characters acting irrationally as long as they get pointed out and as long as they face consequences for it. Throughout the entire episode, he acted like the victim. He acted like the one who's being wronged. That's actually kinda true, but the problem is he reacted to that situation in a terrible, unrealistic way. He didn't learn his lesson, let alone realize his wrongdoings. And the writers were expecting me to sympathize with him? What? I think the whole idea is that we're supposed to sympathize with Adrian by making Mary trust Alia more than him. That's not a bad idea. As a matter of fact, I think it's an interesting idea. But I honestly think that this is not how you do it properly. Making Cat Noir angry about Ladybug's trust is so out of character for him. This is not the Adrian I know and love. In Queen Banana, I understood why Chloe acted like that, because we all know that the creator hates her. It's very obvious that Chloe being a complete asshole was intentional in this episode. Not to mention, she gets called out for her actions, and she also faced consequences. But what's his excuse? What's his excuse for being such a dick? What's his excuse for being such a hypocrite? What's his excuse for not facing consequences in the end? Does the creator hate him too? No seriously, does he hate Adrian? Did he intentionally make him this stupid so I can actually hate him? I want to know. Just a friendly reminder, I don't fully hate Adrian. He just acted like an asshole in this one episode. That's it. For me, that's not worthy of being 100% unrespectable. So he still has my respect. Oh, but Cyrus, why did you say Mary lost all of your respect in the NYC special? She was just being an asshole in that movie as well. And you said, you said yourself, that being a complete asshole isn't worthy of being 100% unrespectable. Well, the big difference is, in my opinion, Adrian so far only has three episodes where he is completely unlikable. He still hasn't crossed the line. But Mary? Way too many episodes where I couldn't fucking stand her. The NYC special eventually reached my limit for Mary. That's why. In order for Adrian to lose all of my respect, he just needs to cross the line. But so far, he hasn't, and that's great. Alia was pretty good in this episode. I know she had flaws, but that's what makes a character great. And the fact that she actually acknowledged that she has flaws is a really good thing. Gabby's plan is really dumb. You made a Senta monster that has so much potential to defeat the two heroes. And yet you only used it for just one Akuma. You suck, Gabriel. The fight scene is so forgettable that I actually didn't talk about it. Overall, Haxan is one of the worst episodes of Season 4, and I'm going to give it a 3 out of 10. Alia is awesome. Next! The episode begins Jurassic Park style. This scene is indeed a direct reference to Jurassic Park. I mean, why wouldn't it be? Dinosaurs brought back to life by scientists, science that went too far, Jurassic Park... <sighs> if only that was the plot of this episode, it would have been so much fun. But instead, we get an episode that's just plain stupid. Yeah, I really think Rocketeer is stupid. The name doesn't sound stupid, but the episode itself... Oh boy. After taming the dinosaurs, Michelangelo, uh, I mean Nino, that's his name, right? Nino has a problem. He's wondering where Rena Rouge is. Ladybug tells him that he's all she needed for now. But the truth is, Rena Rouge has been hiding from the surface since the events of Centibubbler. Due to the fact that Gabby knows Ali as Rena, she has now changed her role in supporting Lady Bitch, and her name is officially changed into Rena Furtive. Also, her appearance has changed. Her name sounds good enough, but what can I say about her new design? Hiya. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because the camo pattern doesn't really blend well with baby blue. That's just my own taste. Her old design is... is the absolute best. And also, her name was really fun to say. My secrets have been told. But her new design is utterly ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous! 
ridiculous. Alia tells Nino that she is no longer Rina Rouge, but what she doesn't tell him is that she is still a superhero, which is very understandable. A superhero keeping their secret identity from their loved ones is a very hard but correct choice. You did the right thing, dude. Look at this picture. Alia is literally doing the same exact pose Queen Bee did. I love you, Alia, but don't you dare copy the Queen. Oh look, the original Miraculous Ladybug! Still can't get over the fact that they didn't go for this. All because they had a hard time animating. I guess they don't have the time and or the budget. The film teased an upcoming MCU movie, which features Rina falling in love with Cat Noir. What a coincidence! I was just planning on doing that in my own fanfiction. Yes, it's true. I shipped them. In my own fanfiction. Nino took that very personally for some reason. Nino gets even more pissed after watching Alia's latest lady blog. It's about Cat Noir. As Nino gets more suspicious, he begins investigating Philip Marlowe style. He then starts spying on his girlfriend. Instead of actually trying to talk to her. What the hell is wrong with you, asshole? Thanks to his stupid brain, he now believes that Alia is in love with Cat Noir. Oh, what's the matter? You need a doctor, baby? You scared? <laughs> Fun fact, most relationships end because of a very stupid thing. Jumping to conclusions way too quickly. That's exactly what's happening here. Alia and Nino's relationship is in jeopardy, because one of them jumped to conclusions way too fast. The next day, Nino tells Adrian everything he knows. He tells him that Alia is Rina Rouge, he is Carapace, Lady Bitch knows who they are, Lady Bitch was the one who gave them their miraculouses at the same time. Now, just tell me why. Tell me why would Nino tell Adrian all of these things? What's the point? Why couldn't you just tell all of this to your girlfriend? You love her, don't you? If you do, then go ahead and reason with her. Nino is acting so irrationally stupid and I don't like it. He's insufferable, he's annoying, he just sucks. But I will say this. The way Adrian reacted in this scene was really good. It's nice to see him just being surprised and sad when finding out the truth about Lady Bitch's rule of secret identities. My first time seeing Adrian sadly transforming into Cat Noir was great because it worked with the context of that scene and it also worked with his character. This is how I want Adrian to act when he's starting to doubt Lady Bitch. This is the Adrian I know and love. Way better than him being unreasonably angry. This makes him interesting but not sympathetic. Because how can I possibly sympathize with an entitled asshole? This makes him interesting and sympathetic because I can actually feel what he's feeling right now. I can totally understand what he's going through. I can actually feel sorry for him. Unlike in this episode, and this episode, Nino gets akumatized for being stupid and he transforms into Rocketeer. Like I said before, the name sounds cool, but the design... Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. It's just overall boring. And there's honestly nothing more to say. His power is very effective and cool, but if he's doing that while wearing a dumb costume, it just makes me want to laugh. Lady Bitch and Rena Rouge, I mean... Rena Furtive, I'll never get used to that, arrived to save the day. Lady Bitch plays the video Nina recorded, while Rena uses her Mirage to voice over. Mirage is probably a superpower that's very hard to use, because I seriously have no idea how it works exactly. Rena detransforms and hugs Rocketeer. Oh yeah, don't hug a person that wears a stupid costume. It's embarrassing. Nino rejects his Akuma just like... That. When Chloe broke out, I felt surprised. When Alia broke out, I felt happy. When Nino broke out, I felt nothing. Chloe and Alia's Akuma breakout were good, because at least they were having a difficult time rejecting Gabriel. Not to mention, these two have understandable and emotional motivations. But this piece of turd, he had zero effort rejecting the Akuma. And his ambition is nonsensical garbage. Was I supposed to feel happy for him? Well, I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Jackson, but I don't feel happy for you. I would even say that Felix's Akuma breakout was better than Nino's. Because even though that this was extremely vague, and even though Felix didn't struggle just like Nino, it was still a lot more interesting than this crap. Mary says sorry about what happened to Nino and Alia. No, dude, don't apologize. This is all Nino's fault. He's the one to blame. <laughs> What I really want to happen now is Alia teaching Nino a lesson, that's what she said. Because let us all be real here. Alia teaching Nino a lesson. Or maybe even better, Alia breaking up with him would be a really sensible result. I mean, 
Nino tried to invade her privacy. Nino tried to know all your secrets. Nino seriously, SERIOUSLY, SERIOUSLY needs to be taught a lesson about secrets and boundaries. Learning about these two is very important if you're planning on having a relationship. But no, she didn't teach him a lesson. Instead, she told Nino everything. She told him that she is still a superheroine. I'm still Rena Rouge. What? The hell? Are you even aware about what he did to you, you goddamn moron? Why are you acting like he's done nothing wrong? Why did Luca and Mary break up? Because she wanted to keep him safe from Gabriel. <laughs> Shut up! Telling this guy the truth would be very risky, so she just had to break up. But this woman? It's okay for her to tell her stupid-ass boyfriend her secret identity? Don't you know the dangerous woman? If she can reveal herself to Nino, then she should have revealed herself to Luca. Because this is just not fucking fair! And also, Luca never tried to stalk on his girlfriend. But Nino did. And yet she doesn't want to break up? Let alone lecture him for God's sake? Why'd you have to do that? Tell me why! Tell me why. Because you love him so much? Let me just say right now, that that is not a good excuse! Why the fuck would you stay with Nino who literally tried to know all of your secrets and tried to push boundaries? You stupid fucking bitch! You Anyways, the episode is done. Overall, Rocketeer is stupid. Cat Noir was good, Alia was fine, Mary was fine, but Nino? In my humble opinion, this is Nino at his very worst. Was I supposed to be rooting for Nino in this entire episode? If so, then I guess they failed embarrassingly because I just couldn't. I couldn't root for him. It's fine if Nino wants to know the truth about his girlfriend, but the fact that he already jumped to the conclusion that Alia loves Cat Noir without even letting his girlfriend explain just makes me want to doubt that he actually loves Alia. Nino was just plain stupid in Rocketeer. I would have loved it if he faced consequences, or maybe acknowledge his mistakes in the end. But no, he got an awesome reward instead. I truly hate it when characters do nonsensical bad things and don't get any punishment in the end. It just makes me want to ask someone to cut me from ear to ear. From ear, to ear. 3 out of 10, Alia deserves better than Nino. Next! Now let us get to Wishmaker, the episode that many fans consider to be the absolute best episode of Miraculous Lady Cock. Let's see if it really is. The episode is about Mary, Adrian, and Luca going to a convention so they can discover who they want to be in the future. Meanwhile, Alec, the best guy ever, goes around and humiliates people, I guess. However, he's failing to humiliate them and ends up humiliating himself. It was revealed that he used to be a kid with really long hair. Everyone made fun of him, so he ended up having a career of making fun of people who made fun of him. He also ended up shaving his head. This leads to Alec having an existential crisis. He gets akumatized for the first time, and he transforms into Wishmaker, a supervillain that can make people's dreams come true. I honestly don't see how that's a villainous thing to do, and I honestly don't see how that's threatening. Ladybug recruits Luca for the fight so they can get second chances. In the first timeline, Ladybug's secret identity was revealed right in front of Luca and Gabriel, thanks to Wishmaker. In the second timeline, Cat Noir's secret identity was revealed, and it was really interesting. In the third timeline, they finally won. Luca, now knowing who they are, without them knowing that he knows who they are, decides to, I guess, give up any chances of getting back with Mary, because Mary loves Adrian, and Adrian loves Ladybug, and he knows who they really are. Yeah, rest in peace, Lucanette. The episode ends with Alec having redemption. He has now become a super idol. Super idol the show and that was Wishmaker. Do I think it's the best? Of course not. I have seen much, much, much better episodes. Especially this one. Hell yeah, Harley Quinn. It's a good episode, that's for sure, but it's not the absolute best in my opinion. I'm giving Wishmaker a 7 out of 10. Monkey balls. Now before we move on, let me talk about two really important things. Luca. Okay, let's make this crystal clear. 
the real reason why I never cared about this guy is because because he seems like a chill guy who doesn't really have any struggles in his life. Julika, his lesbian sister, is undeniably a lot more interesting because unlike him, she has struggles and a lot more flaws. For me, Luca only became compelling in truth because in that episode, he finally has problems and character flaws. I actually found him interesting when he's very concerned about Mary's absence. It makes him look like a real human being and not a fucking carefree robot. I also found him interesting when he became angry at Jared Rock for abandoning him, even though it came out of nowhere. Okay, some people say that the twist of Jared being Luca's father isn't something that's out of nowhere. It has been hinted a couple of times before this episode. Well, I would still argue that this is out of nowhere. Yeah, the twist of Jared Rock being Luca's father isn't out of nowhere. But Luca wanting to know the truth about his father is something that's out of nowhere. Like I said in this video, I never really saw Luca as someone who wants to know things about his father. He just seems like a carefree guy who is never bothered by anything. There was a buildup for Jared being Luca's father, but there was never any buildup towards Luca caring about it. You know what I mean? After he found out the truth about his long lost father, he just accepted him. That's it. No contradictions, no arguments, no problems, no drama whatsoever. So... I don't think I need to care. In Wishmaker, he's just the same as always. A perfectly relaxed guy who's absolutely carefree and problem free. Now that he knows who the main characters are, do I care about him? Well, if he's going to have struggles, if he's going to be concerned about it, if this will actually make him interesting, then I think I will. But if he's not going to be bothered about this in the future, then I guess I never will care about him. I honestly think Luca finding out about their identities is forced. Let me explain. Wishmaker is literally Mr. Pigeon 72, but miles better without a doubt. The purpose of that episode is to completely Thanos snap Adrigami and ruin any chances of getting them back together. Putting Adrigami to an end is not a bad idea, but the problem is the execution obviously. It was so dumb. Kagami, after being incredibly humiliated by Mary, she told her that they are made for each other. Why? I'm still wondering to this day, dude. I really don't know why she said all of those things. Maybe she said they are made for each other because the writers ran out of ideas on how to put Adrigami to an end. It is so unbelievably forced because logic is nowhere to be found. Wishmaker, also known as the Lucanet Elimination. <laughs> How did Lucanet come to an end? By letting Luca know who they are. Did they do this so they can give Luca some sort of conflict in his life? Or did they do this only for the sake of making the Love Square endgame? What is the purpose of your face? What is the purpose of your face? Why are you sad? Is it because you now know who they are? And it's going to lead to some trouble? Or are you sad because you finally decide to give up any chances of getting back together with Mary? Now that you know that they are made for each other. I don't know, dude. If this will get explored even more in future episodes, then I'm looking forward to it. But if this only really happened to end Lucanette, nothing else, then I can safely conclude that this is forced writing. If you think about it, Luca never really needed to be here. Either of these two could have easily used the Snake Miraculous by themselves. Cat Noir has done that before, dude. So why did Luca need to be here? To end Lucanette? I don't know yet. Alec. For a long time, he was just a minor character. But in Wishmaker, for the first time ever, he finally has a major role and it makes me so happy. I've always wanted this guy to have a major role. He's always been the funniest character ever. His supervillain design is amazing, as well as his costume in the end. I'm glad that this guy was able to change, but I have a problem. <laughs> The concept of Alec redeeming himself in Wishmaker is not the problem. The problem for me is the fact that this concept was executed. This makes the entire Miraculous Ladybug TV show look objectively terrible. Alec, a person who had a terrible childhood, was able to change. But Chloe, a person who also had a terrible childhood, is incapable of change. I mean, come on! How can you not see this and think it's anything other than double standard? This show literally has double standard now! I swear to God, if Chloe is never going to be redeemed, then I think we can all conclude that this show is objectively bad. Paris is all broken! Fuck, fuck, meow, meow! Are you fucking kidding me with this episode? Shut up! 
I know I said that I didn't think this episode is that bad. It's still much better than Soul Killer and Bitch Banana, but I never said it's good. It's still a horrific piece of shit. I don't want to do this. Mary babysits a bunch of annoying cunts with her grandpa. I believe his name is Roland. Adrian calls Mary to come to the Eiffel Tower so she can help him fix his costume. Mary has a plan for her love confession, I guess. I don't know. Tiki says that she's overcomplicating things. Why only now you decide to say the most obvious thing ever? Why only now you decide to take your normal pills? Mary replies that love is complicated. That's why she gets a fishing rod so she can break Adrian's wings and she hopes that Adrian will call her for... <sighs> This is so dumb! Let's go back to Roland. He gets akumatized and transforms into Simple Man. Oh lord, why have you forsaken me? Tell me why! Tell me why. His power is simply making everyone morons. I'm not trying to be funny. That really is his power. Making everyone stupid morons. Shut up! Please shut up! Lady Bitch and Ass Noir arrived to save the day. Unfortunately, they got simplified as well, making it hard for them to fight back. The fight scene is just... Uh, uh... After defeating Simple Man, Mary learned a very important lesson. She should always do things in a simple way. Overcomplicating things is never good. That's honestly a good lesson for kids. But did Mary really learn her lesson? I'm sorry for asking a stupid question. <laughs> A lot of people keep on considering Chloe as irredeemable. They simply do not know who truly is irredeemable. Mary will never change. At least, not for me. <laughs> The episode ends with these guys just watching a movie, and that that's it. <sighs> this episode simply sucks, no pun intended. The plot is boring as all hell. The fight scene was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. These kids make me want to support suicide. Simple Man looks like a joke. Mary's fucking stupid. And there's honestly nothing more to say. It's just that boring and forgettable. <sighs> so far. Simple Man is my least favorite episode in the entire show, but objectively speaking, it certainly isn't the worst. 2 out of 10, still better than Soulfucker and Queen Bitch. <laughs> Dearest family is absolute garbage. I am for real. I am for real. The episode starts with Gabby unlocking his full potential because we now know that this book is literally nothing but what the Guardians know about the Miraculous is so far and that there is actually more to these powers. I guess you can say that the Guardians who made this book were fucking lazy morons. They were not able to figure this out. But a young teenager was. <sighs> He was able to make a Mega Kuma. It's basically a Super Saiyan Akuma, and it's able to break the magical charms. Be sure to keep listening because I'm about to debunk this and the stupid Cat Blanc argument in this portion. For some reason, when Tiki starts to smell galettes, Tiki begins to act like Tricky the Clown. In other words, these galettes that were specifically made by Mary's family are Tiki's cocaine. Mary's Jilf! I'm serious, she is way too hot for her age. She gives her a motorcycle. Wow! Giving a young teenager a fucking motorcycle. Why can't my parents do that? Oh yeah, because my parents are actually good parents. <laughs> Gabby targets Mary's family who are all arguing about the motorcycle. They all transform into dearest family. My first time seeing Sabine get akumatized. And she honestly looks great. This supervillain team is literally the same as Crocodile. They don't work together, they fight each other. I really don't see how Gabby thought this was a good idea again. As Mary transforms into Ladybug, she starts to crave for galettes like Tiki, making it hard for her to fight. Cat Noir comes out to save the day. Later, Tiki becomes absolutely nuts for galettes that she ended up using all, maybe not all, a lot of her powers and makes a galactical galette. Well, that's fun to say five times fast. Cat Noir brings out his space power-up and cataclysms the whole thing! Adrian, just save the whole damn planet. After giving Tiki a therapy session, Ladybug goes back to the fight. They found the object where the Megakuma is hiding and Cat Noir cataclysms it. Even though it's just a tiny piece of motherfucking plastic! 
What a waste. Mary rides a scooter and the episode ends. Then we get to one of the most confusing epilogues ever made. I'll destroy this world that took you from us to build a new one where we'll never be apart again. What? Did I even hear that correctly? <sighs> I thought... I... Th I thought you want these things so you can bring your wife back to life since these things can make any wish you want. Now you're telling the audience that you want these two because you want to destroy the world and make a new one with your wife in it. Tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why all of a sudden you decided to change your mind and to think that this fucking cunt is meant to be a sympathetic villain. How can I possibly sympathize with a villain that has nonsensical motivations? Sympathetic villain, my ass. I feel more sympathy for Professor Chaos. Ah, uh, ah, uh, son of a bitch. I know I said I'm rooting for Gabriel now, but I never said he's awesome, did I? Overall, Dearest Family sucks. It is way too unfocused, the writing is too forced, and the epilogue? I'm giving it a 3 out of 10. Better than Simple Man. Now before we get to the next episode, we need to talk about a lot of things. Adrian just saved everything and everyone in this episode. And yet, no one talks about it. Absolutely no one. Not even the characters in the show bothered to acknowledge the fact that Cat Noir just saved the planet. You wanna know why no one talks about this? Because this has absolutely no impact to the plot whatsoever. This thing just happened and that's it. Nothing else. Which brings me to the elephant question. What in God's name is the point of all this? What is the point of this subplot about Tiki's addiction to galettes since it doesn't have any relevance to the plot? I thought we already have the Mega Kumas to raise the stakes. Why do we need this to raise even more stakes? It's pointless because it doesn't really do anything. It feels like an obstacle. It feels like a chore. It gets even more pointless by the end because after almost destroying all life on the water planet, what the hell did Tiki say? What are we going to do next year on Galette Day? I've given this some thought. I'm sure that I can reduce my cravings if I just eat galettes more often! <laughs> You're so cute, you know that? You nearly killed everyone because of your addiction, and yet you didn't learn your lesson. Let me say it again for the third time in a row. I abhor it when characters that I'm supposed to be loving do really unforgivable things and they don't face consequences afterwards, let alone realize what they have done. It makes them so unrealistically unlikable. This episode made Tiki interesting, that's for sure, but most definitely not likable. Tiki sucks. And now, my friends, it is finally time to debunk the whole Cat Blanc argument. So many people keep on using this as a rational explanation to why she couldn't and probably never can reveal herself to Cat Noir. Some people have debunked this by using the magical charm excuse. But now that we know that Gabriel can destroy the magical charms by using Megakumas, this argument immediately got debunked. But guess what? This argument can be debunked as well. Magical charms are now a stupid excuse. But here is an excuse that might as well be an excuse, not only for Cat Blanc, but for everything. <gasps> Lady Bitch's powers! She can create whatever she wants, right? Yes, she can, as a matter of fact. This episode says so, and this episode says so. If she can make a galactical galette, she can make anything. Anything that can defeat the villains and save everyone. So, so just make another type of magical charm that can be immune to any type of Akumas. Then give it to Cat Noir so you can reveal yourself to him, and then boom, happily ever after. You can do that, right? You have no limits, am I right? Yes, create! Your only limits are the ones you put on yourself! Uh, can someone please properly explain what she just said? Because I really can't interpret this and think it's anything other than You have no limits! If she really has no limits, then go ahead and make an invincible magical charm. Or maybe make a shadow moth tracker so you can finally take him down. If you think you're not strong enough to beat him, then make a fucking weapon that's strong enough to do it. Quit putting so much pressure on her, Cyrus. She can't do all of those things because he's just a young teenager. Do I really need to do this again? So my answer is no.
There's no excuse. There was no excuse for her not revealing herself to Cat Noir in the first place. Maybe she couldn't do it because way before this episode, she didn't know she can do these things. It's all thanks to Alia. Hey, if Mary can do these things all by herself, she can most definitely do this on her own as well. Maybe she didn't do this because she's just so goddamn afraid that Cat Blanc might happen again. Okay, that's a good excuse. But tell me this, how the fuck am I supposed to believe that Mary is afraid Cat Blanc is going to happen again? Here's the truth. I was actually so confused that people started commenting Cat Blanc in this video. When I read them, I was all like, what? I was supposed to care about that shit? This shit was actually very important? I honestly completely forgot about Cat Blanc's importance. I care so much about Adrian's tragic mysterious family life because that has been fleshed out in a lot of episodes. Not too much and not too less. I also care about Felix. Even though he only appeared in two episodes and even though he's not talked about that much, I still do care about him because his storyline is very interesting. At the end of his first episode, we were left with a cliffhanger. And at the end of his second episode, we were left with another cliffhanger. There is still so much going on with him. Not to mention, Felix and Adrian's family life are things that actually happened for real in the show. And I also care about Lady Bitch's powers because I think there is still so much to learn about these things. And this thing is actually a real thing in the show. But Cat Blanc? Technically, it never happened. Because of motherfucking time travel! Plus, in the end of Cat Blanc, we were not left with any cliffhanger. Plus, plus, in Gang of Secrets, when she revealed herself to Alia, we never really get any mentions of Cat Blanc. I would have loved this better if she mentioned Cat Blanc so it would make more sense to why she didn't do it with Cat Noir, that's what she said. Due to the poor execution of Cat Blanc's relevance in the show, I ended up believing that this is not even that relevant at all. But even if this is explored enough, it doesn't even matter because we now know that this thing can be easily resolved due to the confusing fact that Lady Bitch can make whatever she wants and she has no limits. The time has come. Time has come. Let us now get to Ephemero, aka the 100th episode. The episode begins with Gabby talking to Emily. Typical as fuck. Gabby and Adrian go to a press conference, but his spider senses are tingling, so he let Adrian handle the press conference all by himself. The 100th collection of the brand Gabriel is dedicated to your recently departed mother. How do you feel about this dedication? Wow, bitch. You really think that's an appropriate question to ask anyone? Hey, your mom's dead! You remember that, asshole? After defeating the akumatized villain with the help of a lot of mindless, emotionless pawns, Su Han returns! He's pissed off because she used 9 Miraculouses at once, when she could've just used Cat Noir for the whole fight. Or maybe she could've just done all of this by herself. <coughs> Ladybug says that she couldn't contact Cat Noir, which led Su Han to tell her to reveal herself to Cat Noir, so these two can have better communication. He has a point. Ladybug replies that that simply cannot happen, because if they knew each other, then the show will end. He tells her that either do the reveal or Cat Noir will be replaced. So Mary has no choice but to do the reveal in the Eiffel Tower. Before she does that, she and Luca explain to the audience why she just can't reveal herself to Cat Noir. So Lady Bitch's plan is to have the green one to travel back in time as soon as she knows who Cat Noir is, so he can know who he is, while she won't. The green one will then tell Suhan who Cat Noir is, and the mission will be done. After Cat Noir revealed himself, Ladybug didn't tell the green one to travel back in time because she was being a deer in the headlights. Deer in the and that loses the green one's second chance. She decides to reveal herself when she's ready. When she did reveal herself, what happened next? The apocalypse? The seven trumpet? No, it's just them being in love, that's it. Nothing special happened. This is what we've been waiting for for so long. The entire series endlessly teased this stupid ship. And how is it? Nothing. It ended up being just another typical relationship. Later, Gabby was able to find out the truth all because Adrian said, Sweet dreams, m'lady. Oh my god. <laughs> Gabby reveals all of his secrets to Adrian. He akumatizes him and Adrian transforms into the most forgettable villain of all time, Ephemeral. 
And I mean the most forgettable because his screen time is less than a fucking minute. I am not kidding. Hey look, it's Batman. Before Gabby finally made his wish, the Green Miraculous travels back in time to save the day. So time went back to the moment before they revealed themselves. Everything went nuts because a Kwame used his powers with no user. Ladybug's lucky charm is a scale weight because it symbolizes the International Bureau of Weights and Measures, which coordinates all the clocks with the help of the satellite right above Paris. So if they fix the satellite's time, everything will be back to normal. Both of them transform into Spacebug and Nyankat and fly up to space. After they fix the satellite's clock, Spacebug uses Miraculous Ladybug to fix everything. Su Han is furious but Ladybug shuts him up by saying that she doesn't want to know who Cat Noir is and she doesn't need to because because she is a, a narcissistic guardian and says that Su Han's commands are only based on his fears, which is very stupid according to her. Grandmaster Su Han admits that he is a goddamn moron, which is not true, and says that Ladybug is the best guardian ever, which is also not true. Ladybug and Su Han pounds it and the episode ends. <sighs> Where to begin with this atrocity? First off, the pacing. The pacing is way too goddamn fast that I actually had to pause every minute to catch my breath. And I'm not lying, that actually happened to me. Take a look at this scene. It's just about Lady Bitch and Cat Noir flying back to Earth. Slowly. And I mean slowly. It's like the episode itself... Shh! Shut up! It's like the episode itself is very self-aware that it's going way too fast. So it just had to stop the plot for a moment and give the audience a chance to breathe. This blows my goddamn mind! This godforsaken episode seems to try way too hard to convince me that this can never happen. And did it manage? Well, let's take a look at this scene. I actually had to replay this a total of 10 times so I can fully understand it. It's true. And after studying this scene very carefully, I think I can safely conclude that there is still no good excuse to why they can't know each other. Let me summarize the whole conversation. If they knew each other, then Gabriel can have a big chance of winning. Their unconditional love for each other can get in the way. If one of them gets akumatized, then they can commit treachery. You know what? I don't even need to continue because none of them are good excuses. All thanks to Mr. Pigeon 72. You can make anything you want, right? So just make an invincible magical charm, give it to Cat Noir so he can never get akumatized, no matter how strong Gabby's akumas can get, and then boom, and then live happily ever after, the end. Go ahead and keep on making excuses down in the comments all you want. In the end, in the end. I'm never going to accept them. Because this fucking episode made the ultimate excuse. The indestructible excuse. The excuse for everything. So my answer is... No! I still can't see any logical reason why they can't reveal themselves to each other. And I don't think I ever will. It's just this stupid ass episode. But in fact, if worse comes to worst, a miraculous holder could know Cat Noir's identity or mine. But not both. But not both? He knows both of you and what happened afterwards? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! So it's totally fine if a holder knows who you both are, and it's also okay to know each other as long as Gabriel doesn't find out! Oh, but Cyrus, they don't exactly know what Gabby is capable of. They don't know for sure if he's always watching. Then fucking use your powers to make a fucking invincible magical charm! And honestly, who fucking cares if there are going to be- Shut up! I'm talking here! Bitch! And also, who fucking cares if there are going to be consequences? We always have time travel to get them back. And we always have her powers to fix everything afterwards. Sweet dreams, milady. Do you have the slightest idea how little that narrows it down? Why the hell would you immediately assume that your own son is Cat Noir? By just that line. Sweet dreams, milady. Dude, everyone in the world says m'lady. Even I say m'lady. Like right now, I just said m'lady. So I'm Cat Noir. Just take me now. Maybe he knows because he is very well aware of the nickname Cat Noir uses to address Ladybug. Well, as I recall... I don't recall you being familiar with what Cat Noir says to Ladybug at all. 
So tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me why do you think he's Cat Noir by just hearing Milady come out from his mouth? Because you notice that his voice sounds very similar to Cat Noir? If the answer is yes, then why in the love of God did you not notice before? You've known your son forever! If you knew they sound similar, then why didn't you do anything about it for the past three seasons? You could've won by now, but only now you choose to take your normal pills? We had all the time in the world! <laughs> Cat Blanc has much more logic, because in that episode, it made sense for Gabby finding out the truth thanks to Natalie witnessing Adrian transform right in front of her naked eyes. Well, it's not really naked, she's wearing glasses. But this? Sweet dreams, milady. Give me a fucking break! The ending scene is just... Mary shit telling Su Han that he's wrong and she's right about everything. You know, tell me why... Tell me why... Tell me why is this man being treated as someone who is wrong? How is he wrong? He is, as a matter of fact, 100% right! All he wanted is for Lady Bitch to know who Cat Noir is so she can be a better leader. Which is a good idea. Keeping up with your comrades is what being a great leader is all about. You don't have to wear that mask around us if you don't want to. It's not really about me. There are people back home that I need to protect. And the mask helps me do that. Hey, I get it. No one back home knows I'm Miss Marvel either. Except my Abu, of course, but, um, mask or no mask, we all need people who have our backs and really get us. Even the weird parts. Uh, especially the weird parts. <laughs> he never told you to reveal yourself to him. So tell me who is to blame. Tell me What exactly did this fucking cunt say again? You're judging us based on your own fears and not on our actions. <gasps> based on his fears? Not on your action? Maybe his commands are based on his fears because he's afraid about the fact that literal young teenagers are using sacred objects that are capable of destroying the world. Did you ever think of that, asshole? And also, you wanna know a really fun fact, lady bitch? You are a hypocrite. Your declaration of not revealing yourself to Cat Noir is based on your fears as well. You don't want to reveal yourself to him because you're afraid of something too. Shitty Moth successfully kicking your ass. So don't you fucking dare call him out for being afraid. You are afraid as well. You goddamn HYPOCRITE! I've proven to you a hundred times that I'm a good guardian. And Cat Noir and I have proven to you a hundred times that we were exceptional superheroes. And you! How many times have you told us that we were messing up when that was totally untrue? You're judging us based on your own fears and not on our actions. Wait! I'm... I'm ready now. Spots off. I'm sorry. I promise this won't take long. Oh, no! What kind of fucking lesson is this godforsaken episode trying to send to little kids? Remember kids, you should uh, you should never listen to your parents, or your teachers, or your mentors if they're trying to give you instructions or wisdom, because at the end of the day, they're just judging you based on their fears and not on your actions. Yeah, it's not like the grown-ups are very reasonable. It's not like they're trying to protect you from yourselves. It's not like they're just trying to keep you safe. It's not like they're trying to teach you a really important lesson in life. And it's not like they're trying to help you grow up to become a better person. Ephemeral is one of the most disgusting, dreadful, enraging, infuriating, perplexing, nasty pieces of fictional media I've ever had the displeasure of witnessing 
thing with my own two naked eyeballs. I hope this gets deleted because there's- I don't see a fucking point at all. Everything went back to normal in the end. And to think that this is the 100th episode. The 100th episode. And yet we're back to square fucking Uno. The reasons why they can't know each other are so dumb beyond fuck. The amount of hypocrisy conveyed in this episode is astounding. I can call it official. This is Mary shit at her very worst. She is a massive hypocrite simply because of her words coming back to her. And to think that I'm supposed to be rooting for her. To think that I'm supposed to be loving her. Worst main protagonist ever. Change my fucking mind. No, seriously, do it. I dare you. Comment down below and tell me if there are any MCs that are way worse than this fucking cunt. Shut up! You're judging us based on your own fears and not on our actions. Oh, you're right, little ladybug. No, she's not. I know you know that she is not right. Stop pretending that she is the best because she's not. You are better than that. Oh wait, no, he cannot contradict. He must not contradict the almighty queen of bitches. Contradicting lady bitch is illegal. So watch your mouth around the misses. <laughs> Alia should be the new ladybug because I love Alia now and I hate her more than ever. I hate you! I honestly feel bad for Su Han. He doesn't know that the new official guardian of the Miracle Box is a massive hypocrite and a massive douchebag. If only he knew. If only he knew about the world without the bullshit and the lies. Way before I watched this crap, I totally underestimated how bad it really is. Because I thought they can't make an episode that can top Queen Banana and Soul Crusher. I never knew that it was actually possible to make something stinkier than this. I should have known. I, known. I swear to my sweet, lord, my sweet lord, I am not lying when I say that not a single fucking thing in this episode works. The pacing is way too fast for normal human beings to handle. The writing is simply broken. Every single episode that came out before Ephemeral makes ephemeral look and feel like complete nonsense. This feels like an episode that came from an entirely different TV show because plenty of the information that I received here contradicted a lot if not every Miraculous Lady Skank episode. Nothing in ephemeral makes logical, rational sense. It is nothing but pure gibberish due to the events caused prior to this murder. <laughs> That's why I loathe it the most. <laughs> Ephemeral is worse than life itself. I'd rather go to the deepest level of hell than watch this monstrosity again. I'd rather get back to my college work than watch this again. I'd rather... I'd rather eat the rotten asshole of a roadkill skunk and down it with beer than watch this again. This is the worst Miraculous Ladyfuck episode ever made! Worse than Mr. Pigeon 72, worse than Soul Crusher, worse than Queen Banana, worse than Haksan, worse than Kwame Buster, worse than Party Crasher, worse than Miracle Queen, worse than everything in my emo life! I am dead fucking serious! <sighs> it is my honor to give Ephemeral my first and probably my last 0 0.5 out of 10. Absolutely life changing. It blows my mind that there are people who watch this episode and love it. Wow, really? If everyone in the world knows how good writing works, then everybody will think the same. Ah, the episode of the hour has arrived. What fresh missed opportunities do we have here? What was it I said before? Oh yeah, if this episode and Optigami fused, they would make a perfect series finale. 
Or at the very least, a finale to the Shadow Moth arc. And in a perfect world, we'd finally, finally have a reveal that stuck. Heck, even if this wasn't a finale, it would be a great place to have a permanent reveal. On a related note, Grandmaster Suhan has a point about Cat Noir's identity needing to be known to Mari since she is the Guardian. It would have been different during the first short while when Ladybug and Cat Noir just met and didn't know or trust each other, but it's been so long now that we're past the lack of trust phase. It simply isn't fair that she can know everyone's identities except for Cat Noir's, and it's perfectly valid for Cat to be upset by this. She can't keep using the excuse of Cat Blanc or else her paranoia will end up causing it again. And you know what? I'm actually down for that idea. Here's my version of Ephemeral. Natalie comes up with an idea to tail all of the known Miraculous users by using a Senta monster called Optigami. As discreet as Optigami is, it has a hard time finding the identity of Cat Noir and Ladybug. This is because Reina Furtive has caught sight of it a while ago and gave the duo the heads up to be super careful. Throughout this time, Cat Noir is still festering a bit in his anger and disappointment towards Ladybug for not trusting him and relying more on the other Miraculous users instead of him. He's still in love with her though, so he manages to keep a happy face and be by her side selflessly. Gabriel and Natalie come up with an idea to trap the Miraculous users. It is through this planning that the both of them realize that most of the Miraculous users are in Adrian's class, and they theorize that even the users they don't know the identities of are in that class as well. So, Gabriel allows Adrian to invite his entire class to an event hosted by him and Audrey. He manages to get Luca and Kagami there as well, through reasons. Fast forward a bit. After Shadow Moth successfully manages to have Style Queen eliminate most of the known Miraculous users, Adrian and Mari are stuck in the elevator. This time, however, Alia isn't around to help them because she gets taken out as well. Mari and Adrian are forced to reveal their identities or else all of their loved ones will perish into glitter for good. This, of course, is very shocking to the two of them, but they don't have time to dwell on it and they go defeat the bad guy. Unknown to them, Shadow Moth has seen the reveal through Optigami, and he is overjoyed. He decides to fall back with the current plan and prepares for the final battle between the teen heroes. After everyone is saved, Mari and Adrian talk for a bit. Adrian is super happy that the one he's loved this whole time is Marinette. Mari, however, doesn't know how to feel. Now that she knows that Adrian is Cat Noir, she doesn't know if she really has feelings for him. She avoids looking him in the eye and says that she needs time to think about things and runs off. Adrian is hurt by this apparent rejection, adding to his other worries, and dejectedly goes home. A few days go by of Marinette being super awkward around Adrian and even avoiding him at times. Adrian's negative emotions boil up more and more as he lies on his bed staring up at the ceiling. He's beginning to think that Marinette slash Ladybug isn't the person he thought she was. Plague tries to cheer him up, but nothing seems to work. Gabriel uses this as an opportunity to meet up with Adrian and take him to see the dead slash comatose Emily in her cryogenic pod. Adrian is of course shocked and doesn't know what to say or how to react. Gabriel transforms into Shadow Moth. In response to this, Adrian frantically tries to get away. Shadow Moth reveals that he knows Adrian is Cat Noir and that there is no point in escaping. Desperate, Adrian transforms into Cat Noir to try and cataclysm his father's miraculous so that no more bad things will happen ever again. Maybe then he'll earn Mari's love. Despite his best efforts, Cat Noir is unable to complete his task and Shadow Moth, sensing his son's emotions, successfully manages to akumatize him, turning him back into Cat Blanc. Cat Blanc now has a new plan. Take away Mari's Miraculous and give both of their Miraculous to Shadow Moth so that the duties of being heroes will no longer interfere with their relationship. If Mari is no longer Ladybug, then she can focus on him and only him. To let out some anger, Cat Blanc began to destroy parts of the city. Mari catches wind of this and is horrified about her fears coming to light. She wonders if this was her fault for not talking to Adrian and not trusting in him. Over a megaphone or large speaker, Shadow Moth tries to bait out Ladybug by saying, You don't plan on making Adrian wait too much longer, will you Ladybug? Or shall I say, Marinette Dupan Cheng? Mari realizes that Shadow Moth knows both of their identities and comes to the conclusion that he must have found out when they revealed themselves on the elevator using Optigami. She panics but tries to stay calm as she thinks of a plan. She realizes that she'll need help dealing with Cat Blanc, so she calls up all of the Miraculous users, who all know her identity by now thanks to Shadow Moth's announcement, and tells them to all come to her to get the Miraculous. 
when they all arrive, they don't know how to approach the whole Marinette as Ladybug thing, but nevertheless, they agree to help in any way they can because Mari and Adrian are both dear friends to them. Everyone transforms. Using her lucky charm, Ladybug creates a compass with a broken north pointer. She's not sure what it's used for, but feels like she needs to follow where it's pointing since it's obviously leading her somewhere. She realizes what she has to do. Ladybug instructs them to go and hold off Cat Blanc and Shadow Moth the best they can. They all agree. She tells them to be careful. Feeling like her sewing box with all of the miraculous are no longer safe, she takes it with her as she dashes through the city. Once again, Ladybug's lucky charm compass doesn't point north, but to something very special. She follows it and finds Alex hiding somewhere discreet with her family. Ladybug understands what needs to be done. Alex now knows that this is Marinette and runs up to her asking if she's okay. Ladybug smiles at her friend's concern and tells Alex that she needs her help if the day is going to be saved. Long story short, the Bunny Miraculous Pocket Watch and Kwame are reunited and Alex is able to transform into Bunnix for the first time. Throughout this time, the other Miraculous holders are putting up a good fight, but Cat Blanc is able to cataclysm some of them, which makes Ladybug totally distraught. Shadow Moth, over his megaphone slash loudspeaker, tells Ladybug that everything will be fine once he gets the Miraculous and destroys the disaster of a world and remakes it. Everyone will be alright, and everything will be perfect. Ladybug briefly considers letting him do this if everything will be perfect again. She realizes that she does love both Cat Noir and Adrian as the same person. They are both the same. He's the one she loves and wants to be able to start over with him. In Ladybug's indecision, Cat Blanc crashes in and attacks her. The two fight while Ladybug tries to get Cat Blanc to return to his senses. She apologizes to him and tries to explain her hesitation before. She confesses her feelings, but Cat Blanc is having none of it, and continues to fight her and even blames her for their friends getting destroyed. He says if he gets her miraculous, all will be okay. Bunnix is having a hard time interfering because she's still not sure how to use her powers or what she's supposed to do. After some more fighting, Cat Blanc manages to get the upper hand on Ladybug and takes away her earrings, making her detransform. Just as Shadow Moth is laughing maniacally in victory, Viperion uses his second chance to make time go back to just before Cat Blanc crashed in to interrupt Bunnix and Ladybug. When Cat Blanc crashes in and is about to pounce, Viperion tackles him to the ground and wrestles with him a bit, telling Mari to get away before something else happens. Ladybug, not wanting to leave Viperion to his doom, hesitates a bit before running away with Bunnix. Once in a safe location, Ladybug explains that she needs Bunnix to use Burrow and take them back to the time just before Adrian and Mari got stuck in the elevator during Audrey and Gabriel's event. Bunnix complies, and the two of them go back in time to when Style Queen was on a rampage at the event. Just as Mari is about to run into the elevator, the ladybug from the future blocks her and tells her not to go in. Mari is super confused, but understands once she sees a younger Bunnix. Past Shadow Moth, as well as past Adrian, thinks this is the present ladybug and has Style Queen go after her as she runs off to give Mari space. Natalie orders Optigami to fly towards the future ladybug. Future ladybug, joined by Cat Noir, work to defeat the villain of the day. Meanwhile, Bunnix takes past Mari into her burrow to witness her timeline to show her that Cat Blanc happens again, filling her in on the details of what happened, but omitting the identity of Cat Noir. Mari then proceeds to worry that she can't prevent Cat Blanc no matter what she does and seems depressed. She says that she is a terrible friend and not worthy of being Ladybug. Bunnix disagrees and tells her she is a fantastic Ladybug. If she weren't, Paris and the world would have been destroyed a hundred times over. If she weren't so awesome, her friends wouldn't have banded together to help her in her time of need. She may make some poor decisions sometimes, but she's still a good person. She just needs to trust in her friends more and not carry the burden all on her own. Nothing good will come out of that kind of stress, clearly. Future Ladybug is successfully able to defeat the villain and uses her lucky charm and miraculous Ladybug to fix all of the damage. In anger, Optigami gets released from existence and is no longer an issue. After the pound it, Ladybug separates from Cat Noir so that the two can detransform. But instead of detransforming, future Ladybug begins to disappear since her future no longer exists. Bunnix, who is also disappearing, joins her along with past Marinette. Bunnix is freaking out a bit as she doesn't want to disappear, but Ladybug and Mari both assure her that she will exist again and reminds her of her cool adult self. Bunnix agrees and also says it's probably for the best because the future they came from kind of sucked. She tells Mari not to lose to Shadow Moth. 
Mari agrees not to, and the two finish disappearing. Mari breathes a sigh of relief. She then thinks about things just before rejoining her friends. Later that night, a transformed ladybug calls Cat Noir to the top of the Eiffel Tower to talk. She apologizes for all the hurt she must have caused him from making it seem like she no longer needed him, and for all of the secrets with their identities. She says she's been really unfair to him and realizes that if these negative feelings keep stacking, something bad might happen, something she won't be able to forgive herself for. Kat tells her he understands the situation and all the stress she's been under as Guardian, so he doesn't hold anything against her. Ladybug tells him that he should hold something against her. She hasn't been completely honest with him. She tells him about Cat Blanc and how terrifying it was seeing him destroy his home, the ones he loves, and go insane. She never wanted to experience that again, so she began distancing herself from Cat Noir as a result. This was not the right thing to do. Cat is shocked from this revelation, but thanks Ladybug for her honesty. He now knows why she's been the way she's been, and he's relieved since he thought she didn't like or need him anymore. Ladybug says, no more secrets, and she detransforms in front of him, saying that she trusts him. While shocked, Cat is overjoyed with this development and hugs her. Mari smiles. He asks if this is okay. She said they will make it okay. During the hug, Cat detransforms and Mari sees that he is Adrian. She's exceptionally shocked about this and still doesn't know how to feel about Adrian and Cat being the same person, but in the end, she's happy to have their bond be stronger than ever and thanks him for being her partner and friend. Cue the end card. How's that for a reveal episode? I decided not to make it a finale as I wanted the two of them to have some episodes to adjust to each other, knowing their identities, and soon becoming a couple. An episode like this, though, would be super close to the actual finale. You know, I didn't intend to rewrite Ephemeral, but I was inspired during this script. In any case, I hope you enjoyed both it and my time here today. I had fun! Thanks, Cyrus, for the awesome Miraculous Ladybug powwow. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Cyrus the Great to watch more Miraculous Ladybug content. As for me, I'm the artistic Ayla Bell, and if you head on over to my channel to subscribe for various rewrites, reviews, and rants across different fandoms, I'd super appreciate it. As for now, that's all there is. There isn't any more. <sighs> so those were all of the latest episodes to come out with English dub. INCREDIBLY ATROCIOUS! Even worse than I expected. Gabriel Agrest is fine, Mega Leech is pretty good, Giltrip is amazing, Crocodile is great, Optigami made a gigantic plot hole, but the fight with Style Queen was excellent, so I think it's 50-50. Sensibubbler started out really great, but ended up being mediocre for making a plot contrivance that could've ended EVERYTHING! Glaciator 2 is a breath of fresh air, but I just wish Adrian really did move on from Ladybug. Haksan destroyed Cat Noir, but not completely. Rocketeer is dumb as fuck, mostly because of Nino. He sucks. Alia deserves a much better boyfriend, honestly. Wishmaker is good, but it's not the best. Simple Man is nothing but a joke. Dearest Family sucks. Ephemeral. I don't even wanna fuck this episode. Fuck it to hell. Fuck, fuck it to oblivion. oblivion. Fuck it to damn nation of mankind. mankind. Overall, Miraculous Lady Cox Season 4 isn't going great. Remember what I said in my first Season 4 video? Everything was ruined thanks to Gang of Secrets. Why reveal yourself to her, but not him? Because we're supposed to remain a secret, then why did you reveal yourself to her? Keep yourself a secret to Cat Noir, but not her? Are you with him or against him? Well, I think I want to take that back. Bubbler made me appreciate Gang of Secrets. And rewatching it, it's kind of good, honestly. From now on, it's a 7 out of 10. Gang of Secrets didn't destroy the entire series. Objectively speaking, here are the two episodes that officially ruined the entire show. Mr. Pigeon 72 and Ephemeral. These two episodes made me realize that I shouldn't care at all if there's going to be a dramatic, catastrophic, apocalyptic event because there's always time travel and there's always Lady Bitch's limitless power of creation. There is always a price for everything, Cyrus. Maybe using her powers with full potential can cause the end of the universe. I don't fucking care! Because time travel is a thing in this show. And also, her fucking powers can fix everything in the end. Time travel plus limitless power of creation equals no lasting consequences.
Stupid people keep on complaining about Chloe being racist. How come they're not complaining about the real problem of the show? The fucking plot contrivances! They're everywhere! Miraculous holders can change their appearance? And that can be a perfect solution? If their secret identities are exposed? These two can spy on their enemies now, but not back then? She can make whatever she wants with no limitations? Time traveling can happen anytime they want? And if there are any consequences, her powers will always fix them? I don't know about you, but I'm admitting now that I have a problem. I don't know about you, but I'm admitting now that I have a problem. I just realized something. The filler episodes are the best. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because this show is just so goddamn terrible at moving the plot forward. Whenever the plot is going forward, there will always be something so stupidly nonsense- Shut up! There will always be something so stupidly nonsensical that it really takes me out of the show. The filler episodes are honestly way better because they are at least a lot more consistent and understandable. I just can't believe I'm saying this, but it's true. The filler episodes are indeed way more sensical and enjoyable than the ones that are moving the plot forward. And yes, I'm including Simple Man. I mean it. I'm including Simple Man. Oh my god. <laughs> Some people say that season 4 stepped up the game. Yeah, I agree. It did step up the game. The game of fucking things up! Since it is proven to be 100% possible to keep on making worse and worse things, then I think Ephemeral's title of worst miraculous episode ever will not last for long. Because I know, I know that the writers are capable of making worse episodes. I just know it. They really are trying to get the Guinness World Record for the worst writing in TV history! Miraculous is now ruined, for the second time, but this is not the end. Season 4 is almost done, and you bet your ass I'm still going to keep on watching, because I really want to know what will happen next. In my opinion, even though everything's crumbled, I still think redemption is possible, if they're going to go this way. Further explain Lady Bitch's powers with more logic so that I can finally stop using it as an excuse for everything. Give more rationality to the reason why they just can't know each other, since it's supposedly a really important plot point. Elucidate why Natalie and Gabby couldn't do this before. And most importantly, if you're going to do more time travel, don't make it that easy for them to do it. And also, never let her do something stupid like that ever again. I just wish you would fucking grow up! I just wish you would fucking grow up! Miraculous receiving redemption is going to be hard, but possible. But what am I saying? This is Miraculous Lady Trash. Of course it's going to get worse. That's why I love talking about it. It's just so much fun talking about things that I hate. Because it makes me feel so alive. It makes me feel human. And I get to tell people how good writing still matters to me. You hate this show so much, why do you keep on watching it? You guys will definitely understand why. If you had what I got. Now, about this woman. I totally forgot her name, so can I just call her Misty because she really is nothing but a mistake? I made a promise that I will reconsider my opinions about her if she gets more development, more personality, more relevance, more anything. And did she? No! So far, she has been absolutely nothing. Since that is the case, I'm still not going to take it back. She is still the worst character- Shut up! She is still the worst character in the entire show. It's hard to believe that there are people who actually consider her as a memorable character. Saying that Misty is a memorable character is like saying Ethan Winters is a memorable character. Actually, you know what? I apologize. I apologize for insulting Ethan! Even the most forgettable Resident Evil protagonist is a lot more- <sighs> Will you please shut up? Even the most forgettable Resident Evil protagonist is a lot more memorable than this woman. Maybe she will improve, because it's only a matter of time until her true colors come out. Yeah, you definitely know what I'm thinking. She is secretly a villain. I'm going to keep my eye on you, Misty. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, it really means a lot. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and Happy Birthday, Jesus. See you guys in 2022.
So, uh, <laughs> what are your overall thoughts about Miraculous Ladybug? I fucking hate it. Garbage. And please don't tell my friend I said that. Okay. She's gonna kill me. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I'm, what? Joking. What? I, I'm joking. What? I'm joking. I don't. You don't hate it? Look, I, I, I don't like it. Hate would be an overstatement. I don't like it. I'm not fully invested in a story to actually hate it. I'm just watching it for, for you know, to try it out, and it didn't, it didn't quite set me there. Right. I, I don't like it, and I think that the. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the show creator can do it, can do it better, a lot, can do better than that, than that. So yeah, I don't like it. But I, I think I could do it better than that. Huh, you that was complete garbage. It was like garbage. People are gonna hate me. <laughs> People are gonna actually hate. Well, that's uh, understandable. Oh yeah. I mean, I talk about mm -hmm, it yeah. on YouTube all the time, and uh, of course I get mm -hmm. hate because I hate it so much. I mean, that's what I get for having an opinion, huh? I get so much, oh, what's the big deal? So what if I hate the show? Okay. Uh, can you tell me your channel when I watch your video? No, oh, just look at my name up here, Cyrus the Great. Oh, this is you. Oh, you make YouTube video. Oh, oh shit. Oh. Okay. You just got yourself another subscriber. Yeah. Wait. I don't really like Miraculous but I don't want to watch your video. It's just to, 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 to listen to you roasting the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. 